Nineteen ninety eight. That's right. They say we look alike. I'll take I'll take that. I'm I don't know about joined by the head coach of the Houston Dynamo, Ben Olson. Congratulations to the two thousand twenty three Lamar Hunt US Open Cup champions. Uh, just one note as we get started. Ben becomes the third coach in Open Cup history to lead two different MLS teams to the championship, joining Siggy Schmid and Oscar Pereja. Uh, we're going to start with opening comments from Ben, and then we'll take your questions. Again, a reminder for translation, English is Channel 1, Spanish Channel 2. No, I, I, don't, I don't have much. Uh, we're, we're obviously thrilled uh, with, with this win. Um, it, it means a lot to, obviously, the players, and uh, but... You know, we're we're starting in in a lot of ways anew at, at Houston and trying to build something. Uh, and as this goes, and and we have these little moments to to of growth, this kind of speeds it up a little bit, pours a little gasoline on on what we're trying to do. Um, you know, credit Ted uh, Siegel, our owner, and what he's done, and uh, Pat Onstead, Asher Mendelson, putting together a, a, a really good group. Uh, and, and uh, allowing me to get back in the game. So uh, just a, a great moment for the organization to, to keep pushing us forward. Hey, hey, Ben. Um, it seemed like it was a tell of two halves for this team. The first half, you guys just came smoking hot. Mm -hmm. And then the second half, a little bit more conservative. What can you tell us about the first half? How did you, you, know, you make this? I, I think we were so um, up for this match that we put so much into that. And uh, some some really good soccer uh, on the offensive end and on the defensive end, uh, really just dialed in, and that takes a, a lot of stamina, both physically and mentally. And you, know, you get your goals, and then you, you, you're a hair more passive in the second half. And uh, trying to find that balance is always tough, in particular when teams are uh, making adjustments and, and coming after you with with more numbers. <clears throat> so. But it, it shows both of our sides, and, and we've used, uh, at times this year, we've been resilient. We, uh, we've had to grind a little bit and, and get results that way, and there's been times where we, we can play in the way we did in the first half. So uh, it, uh, um, 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 I wish we would have played the entire game in the, the manner we did the first half, but that's not reality. And uh, against them, you, you have to stick your chances, and that's what a common theme against them because they hang in there and you see it time in time out uh the late game uh, goals and and the theatrics that they they bring late in the game uh there's a real belief with this team that that they don't lose and uh, so we knew it was going to be a very difficult in the second half to get the one joseph brought real energy for them and, and it was a real handful and we we rode our luck but they rode their luck too I mean, we have three v2s and two v1s and, and we just didn't find that third goal when we did it was offsides Good night, Ben. I'm Dragana from Deporto Total USA. I wanted to ask you two quick ones. Did uh, you take into account fielding your team today, uh, the controversy if Messi was going to play or if Messi is not going to play? Did that influence you a bit? And second, when you came to Houston Dynamo, um, you promised this team uh, titles, you promised to change that mentality, and now you've done it. How are you feeling personally uh, winning uh, your second U.S. Open Cup as a manager with with a non conventional team, as they say. Thank yeah, you. I never promise titles, <laughs> um, but uh, it is nice to to, to get one. And um, the, uh, I, I forgot your first question. What was your first question? Yeah, you know, I, I think we prepared all week for Messi and Alba, and let, let's let's be honest, they're a different team. Uh, with and uh, with and without them, uh, but we also heard the rumors, and and we had a, a a fairly clear game plan with and without him. They are they're definitely different uh, when he's not on the field, and and uh, I think they missed him tonight, and I think they missed Alba, and, but uh, that's okay. They're still a pretty good team, and they've put together what, uh, in a short amount of time an incredible group, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not going to take anything away from our our, our group tonight. Michelle Coffin from Miami Herald. You answered part of my question. Uh, can you just talk about, you know, obviously they are a different team with and, and without Messi. What is it that's missing when he's not out there? I mean, obviously the best player in the world, but the other players around him, 
How do you think they play differently when, when he's not there? The Miami team, how are they different? Uh, he's, uh, he, he elevates everyone. And I, I saw a little bit with when, when Wayne, uh, Wayne Rooney came to DC United when, when he was on the field, it, it just it was different. You, you were going to battle with, uh, a legend, a guy that you can believe in and, uh, is just won everything. And then, uh, so, but I, again, I don't think that was necessarily the case. I don't think there was any lack of energy or, or fight from them. I think it was just, you know, they were missing, uh, their, their, their best player. If I was missing, Hector Herrera tonight, it would have been a different game. So again, but I'm not, I'm not crying for him. Uh, it's, it's still a really good team that that we beat tonight. Uh, ben, obviously, I think the a common narrative around this game was that you guys, you know, weren't given a chance. Nobody respected you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the narrative now might be that people do have to think of you a little bit different, give you respect. I, I just want to ask how much you you even care about any of that. Uh, I, I think we're used to it, right? We, we're, again, I'm, I'm seeing that we, as I said before, we live in that space. And I, when when I got to Houston, everyone said it. It's like this this place. It's um, you know, it, there's a, there's a lot of disrespect going on, and and we're almost invisible. And uh, uh and and I saw it firsthand over the first couple months. And uh, again, that's that's our job. That's what the, tonight's about. That's what winning games, and that's what trying to get into the postseason is about. Is 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 this this progress and, and this process of us putting Houston uh, back on the map a little bit and, and making sure that we're uh, a, 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 post a postseason team that uh, is uh, consistently playing for, for trophies. Coach, uh, Matthew Bunch with the Cup.us. Um, your last major honors of players was with the Open Cup with DC. You're, you won the Open Cup as a manager with DC. You now win it with Houston. What does this competition mean to you uh, as uh, an individual, having the opportunity now to win it three different times? The road to the Open Cup is always a wild one. I've said it many times. We could have lost to Tampa. We were down a man in uh, Kansas City, and they pumped us. And we, we, you know, we rode our luck there. Minnesota gave us a red card. And I, I mean, the, the road to get here is always a wild one. But you get into the quarters, and you're just like, okay, we made it this far, uh, and we turn it up. What I will say is, we I, I've always respected this tournament. Um, I, I'm a romantic with it. It means a lot to me. Uh, growing up, the FA Cup and, and these cups that amateur teams get to play bigger teams and the bigger teams get the big, bigger team. It was always just a I, I thought a, a really neat uh, concept and, and idea. And uh, DC United always had success. We always took it in in, in the right way, and, um, and and we did that this year. The guys. Uh, we, we need to win games at Houston. It doesn't matter if it's an Open Cup. It doesn't matter if it's uh, 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 the, the League's Cup. It, it, these we to get buy-in as a coach, you need to win games, and that include, includes Open Cup and, and try to change the culture around here. Uh, three points or advancing in a tournament, uh, it helps in a big way. Um, what do you think was the difference tactically? Um, Tata just mentioned Tata Martino, uh, the square you use in the midfield uh, with Artur, um, Hector, Tarasquilla, and Basi. Um, do you think that made a difference that you control the midfield, especially well, in the first half? Yeah, I said before the game team. that that's where this game was going to be won or lost. If, if our central midfield uh, played to their potential, uh, we, we'd have a good chance of winning tonight. Uh, and they did. In particular, the first half, there was some beautiful stuff. Um, led by Hector. Hector, uh, uh, I thought was incredible. Our tour is, you know, I just expect that from our tour every game. Uh, the level he had, he was at. Coco is, uh, you know, going north and, and really driving by guys is a, a nice compliment to them. And Bossy, it's, it's very organic. We give them a structure to have success, but a lot of what you see, um, is, uh, is, is, is feel and relationships with those, those four in there. And, it's organic. It's fun to watch, and they they like playing with each other. So that's uh, as a coach, it's it's a, it's a joy to see them when they're clicking. We'll take two more questions in the middle. Uh, two players that I want to ask you about: Nelson Quinones and Griffin Dorsey. Griffin had a wild shot, powerful shot, almost broke the net, and then of course Nelson. He was just 
so relentless. What can you tell us about those two players? Um, okay, Griffin first. Just, just is a wonderful kid and a wonderful human. And the fact that he's been on the bench early in the year makes me think I was crazy. Uh, so he comes in and he, he, he worked at his craft. He, he, he didn't sulk. He's a great example of a guy that's out of it coming in and saying, what do I need to do to get on the field? What do I need to work on? Grabbing assistant coaches, doing film work. And he's just a great example for guys to, when you're not in favor of how to get out of it. Uh, and he just put his head down and worked through and his chance came and he just took it. And, uh, at, at this point, there's no way I'm taking him off the field. He's been uh, unbelievable since he's come on. Uh, so, so yeah, so so much I, that I know. And then Nelson, the last few games, I thought Nelson has been poor, and I, I, I didn't think he showed up. And we had a nice little chat before this game about uh, <laughs> what I thought of his last couple games and where he needs to be and where he can go if he takes this in, uh, if he changes his mentality and how he prepares and being a pro. And I told him, I'm not going to let you you know, stay here when you have this much talent and you can go to some serious places. And that's playing uh, for, for national teams, both young and the full team. And uh, maybe in a, in a year or two, he has the type of talent to, to move on. But uh, it's, it's streaky right now. It's, it's normal as a young, uh, he's a young kid, but he's fearless. This was a championship game and he was, he was nasty. Back left, last one. Hey, Coach, congratulations on, you. on winning the Cup again. Uh, you started off this journey in St. Petersburg, Florida, and ended it today in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, since that Tampa Bay game where you believe uh, the team was outplayed, uh, how has the team elevated the, the level of play? This has been a real process. I mean, we're coming in with 19 new guys on this team, a new coach, a new staff. I have a new staff, so this was always going to be – a process. Did I think it was going to move this quickly? Um, probably not. I thought it was going to, we were going to struggle more than we have this year, uh, but we've been taking care of our, our home games. We, we, we got a couple signings, right? We, we brought some winners in here and people don't, you know, we, we purposely by design brought guys that have championships, whether it's in this league or in Europe, we want guys that are coming from winning cultures. So they understand what, uh, what the bar is, so that that has been a, I, I think, a something we didn't know that was going to kind of propel us, but that, I think that's a big part of it. Thanks, Ben. Okay, guys. Thanks, Thank everyone. you.